time, I call the member for Belmain. Thank you, Mr Assistant Speaker. Uh, I rise uh, today on behalf of the Greens to offer my strong support for the Criminal Records Amendment Historical Homosexual Offences Bill 2014. Uh, Mr Temporary Speaker, you know that we Greens have been strongly supporting this position and I would like to take the opportunity today uh, to warmly thank the member for Coogee for his efforts uh, promoting this bill, for his efforts to coordinate uh, members not only of the government, coalition parties, but also of all parties in this parliament to ensure that this bill is supported. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, the work of Mr Trevor Khan in the other place and of course the Attorney General's office. As we've heard today, uh, there has been a great deal of work making sure that this bill uh, adequately deals with the issue of expunging uh, these convictions from the record, but also does so in a sensitive and appropriate manner uh, to ensure that the objectives of the bill are met in a simple way, uh, but in a way that also could deal with any unintended consequences. Of course, we've seen progress in Victoria, in South Australia, in the United Kingdom, and in New South Wales, it's a very uh, positive step that we take today um, to make a real difference, not only in the lives of people, but symbolically, uh, emphasising and underlining the wrong that was uh, the uh, uh, previous legislation which made uh, homosexual sex an Ill illegal. Uh, of course, the implications for individuals who have convictions recorded against them are not insignificant. Uh, issues around travel, uh, volunteering, employment in particular, and of course the stigma uh, which is associated with these convictions uh, in a place where there should be in fact no stigma. In fact, where loving relationships between people should be celebrated uh, and not criminalised nor have any stigma associated with them. Uh, the pain, uh, the distress, uh, the, the embarrassment which we uh, can all, I'm sure, empathise em 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 with uh, must have been uh, very great for those people who suffered from the conviction, from the harassment and intimidation by the police. And it was only uh, recently that I sat in the parliamentary theatre with many others, uh, celebrating, recognising and acknowledging 30 years after the criminalisation of homosexuality. It was a real testament. I think it was very moving for those of us that were there and those of us who saw the, the, the enormous efforts of gay men and lesbians in particular, uh, their allies, uh, campaigning, fighting, struggling, uh, working to um, abolish not only discriminatory laws but also uh, changing attitudes in society against institutionalised homophobia and supporting uh, justice and equality in our community. And of course, as we've heard from the member for Sydney, um, that really first showed itself most vigorously in 1978. And this legislation today acts as a witness to those struggles. This legislation today recognises that these things don't happen by accident. They only happen when good people uh, work hard and fight, and not only those people that were directly affected by discriminatory legislation are involved, but also their allies uh, come to their support. And that's why today I'm very proud that this parliament, not only independents, Greens, uh, Liberals and also National Party members are uh, speaking up in support of this legislation. And 30 years ago, uh, could anyone have imagined um, a situation in the parliament where that would take place? That is a testament to the efforts of all of those who have struggled over the generations and over the last few decades in particular. So I want to put on the record uh, my, uh, my uh, great support and acknowledgement of all of those people that have gone before us that have made possible the legislation that we're seeing brought in today. Of course, um, great progress has been made in some legisl in legislative ways, but also great progress has been made in the wider community. Mr Temporary Speaker, I wanted to just uh, take a few moments to uh, acknowledge um, how this will affect not only members in the wider New South Wales community, but also shine a light around not only this country, but around the rest of the world, about how um, how uh, wrongs can be acknowledged, how wrongs can be understood and how wrongs can be corrected. And I wanted to quote just briefly from the Sydney Morning Herald, an article by Joe Toby on October the 3rd, entitled Couple Embrace Historic Gay Law Change. And it's a rather moving piece because it talks about the normality of life but also uh, the huge obstacles that need to be overcome. 
no. and it says, uh, Peter Ponsel Boone sits bathed in light in the front room oh. of the Balmain home where he shares with his partner, Peter DeWile, who is busy working in the kitchen. And if anyone knows him, you know that he's always busy. Uh, photographs of loved ones line the wall while a grand portrait of the pair adorns another. <coughs> Dogs bark from out back. It's a slice of very normal Australian domestic life for an openly gay couple, a life that may have seemed just out of reach uh, when uh, Peter de Boone and uh, de, when Bonsal de Boone and de Wall, both now 76, were young when homosexuality was not just heavily stigmatised but was cr criminalised in New South Wales. And I'm very proud to see both of them here today uh, in the Parliament. Um, members of my electorate, the electorate of Balmain, who have made an incredible contribution to community life but also uh, two men who I greatly respect and acknowledge their efforts in order to overturn the, the wrongs of the past. The article goes on to say that Bonsal Boone is one of many older gay men who was arrested for having consensual sex in his youth, a conviction that remains on his criminal record today. Uh, it goes on to say that convictions have followed him, made, it, made known once when he was at Theological College in his early 20s, from which he was forced to leave, and more recently when he applied for a job teaching English to adults in 2001. Well, Mr. Temporary Speaker, today we take steps to, to extinguish that, to ensure that this change to the law will never follow men like Peter again, will not only um, abolish the stigma, but also here in the discussion in this House will say that we celebrate these two men and we celebrate all of those who have suffered from the convictions in the past. And this, this bill today uh, will send a sign to, the, to all of those people who have um, suffered convictions, and we know that it may be less than 100, but it sends a very strong message to the type of society we, we want, that we want, the type of society where diversity is celebrated, the type of society where all people in our community can be treated with justice, fairness and respect, and the type of society that has the integrity and the compassion to look into the past at the wrongs that have been committed and seek to right those commitments. I wanted to also briefly mention Unfit for Publication because it's a, it's a, a weighty three volumes and it, it is an incredible effort, an absolutely incredible effort um, to put together these volumes which really document the institutionalised homophobia which has, been, uh, which has taken place in New South Wales. Looking at the New South Wales Supreme Court um, and, and uh, in particular um, the incredible stories and if you read some of them, just quite remarkable stories of how people have been treated, uh, have been treated in the past. Uh, it, it really does highlight how far we have come. But again, Mr Temporary Speaker, it demonstrates there is a lot more that does need to be done. I echo the comments of the Member for Sydney that around the world and in our region that homosexuality is something which is a criminal offence where people can see uh, very long prison sentences. So it's up to us to shine the light on injustice and discrimination and make sure that we, we, uh, we can take the efforts we're making here today uh, into other states in this country but also um, around the world. So Mr Temporary Speaker, again I give my thanks to the member for Kuji for his efforts. I acknowledge uh, that he has done a lot of work to get to where we are today and I acknowledge the good faith and goodwill of all the members. Uh, some of whom, I'm sure, um, would have been challenged by this, uh, who may have felt that uh, the time wasn't right, but it's a testament to all of those of goodwill who have brought this on, and I'm sure it will pass this House without objection. So I commend this bill to the House. Um, I commend uh, to this House the sentiment behind it, and I again thank all of those who have worked uh, so tirelessly to progress this issue. Mr Temporary Speaker, 